I'd like to welcome you once again to yet another Pender podcast. Uh, this is the sixth part in a six-part series that we've been doing together on Michael Slaughter's book, Revolutionary Kingdom. I'm Will White, the lead pastor of Pender United Methodist Church, and we hope that you'll join us uh, in person or online, 9 a.m. Sunday morning traditional worship or 11.15 a.m. Common Ground. Our services are also on Facebook, on YouTube, and you can watch them live stream through the church's website. Come in person. We'd be glad to see you here at 12401 Alder Woods Drive in Fairfax, Virginia. And so as we begin today, um, I'm going to share with you some other uh, things that I have in common with Eric. Last time I told you that his parents helped coach me when I was uh, sent by the annual conference to South Korea to connect with some churches there. Um, also, Eric was a candidate for ministry years ago when um, he was coming along. I feel very privileged and uh, to have been a part of that process with Eric. Another thing that Eric and I share is we uh, attended the same undergraduate school, That's right. uh, Hampton Sydney yes, College. Sir. And he's going to know that some things that I tell you today are, are factual. Um, and so I, I want to say that uh, because I'm not going to go into some details because, you know, we want to protect people's privacy and so forth. But we're going to be dealing with the, with the big one today, the, the hardest issue, uh, I think, that we have in this entire six part series. We're gonna be talking about racism, racism. And so with that in mind, I wanna read uh, a passage of scripture uh, for you. This is from the Gospel of St. John. It's the 14th chapter and I'll begin at verse 20. And if you were with us last time, you know that I, I made a reference to this passage and I wanted to read it uh, specifically for you at this time. So here it is. On that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. This is Jesus talking to the disciples, and I think also talking to all of us. So Eric, you know, we think about racism, and we think about the fact that we as Christians, if Jesus said he was in the Father, and that he was in us, if he's in us, we sign our letters in Christ. Um, you know, we've talked about how the kingdom of God is relational. How on earth, you know, how on earth uh, is it that, that Christians uh, who, who say we're in Christ, how can we make distinctions based on people's race, their gender? What? what? It's awful. This is this is something that's haunted the church forever. Absolutely. Thank you, Will. And I'm wondering why, while I was invited for week six, uh, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, you know, the, the hard part about the, the big issue of racism is uh, everyone is an individual. Mm -hmm. And because we are individuals, we view life differently. Mm -hmm. And because we view life differently, each of us looks at things in life uh, through a different kind of lens. Mm -hmm. uh, and someone that is, uh, one might say, ignorantly racist might look through the same piece of scripture uh, through a different lens, mm -hmm. and they just might get it all wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, the hard part is, how do you communicate uh, patiently and lovingly <laughs> with someone who is just so far off? And then you're right, Will, uh, Pastor Will, that this uh, has haunted uh, the church for so long mm -hmm. and if we indeed are made in god's image mm -hmm. uh you know we might think Sorry, of that genesis exactly yeah, we we're might, made in god's image we humans. might think of it as a visual image yeah. as a pigmentation of of skin or whatnot but you know as, as theologians we talk about a a moral image we talk about a political image we talk about a social image we talk about all kinds of images of god mm -hmm. And really, the, the Jesus we worship was, was not white. Right. <laughs> he was more Middle Eastern color. Yeah. Uh, very, yeah. very far off than, than oh, what we're used exactly. to. And, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and the fact that, you know, Sunday morning uh, around the, the United States is often the most segregated hours of the, of the, of the week. Now, 
Pender, we have people coming from different walks of life and different uh, racial groups. And, and yet, I would say, um, predominantly, we're, we're Anglo in this congregation. Sure. We have uh, people from uh, different backgrounds, African American, Asian, different places, Middle Eastern. We have mm -hmm. uh, people from, uh, from parts of Asia. But you know, you think about, uh, you, you think about the Book of Acts, uh, sure. the Pentecost, people yep. from, uh, you know, Fra uh, Phragia, Pamphylia, Cappadocia, um, uh, different places, uh, and they're all gathered together in the name of Jesus, and yet we, we still struggle. You, you mentioned, I think, a good beginning. We need to really own our own lens, mm -hmm. and we need to understand what that lens is. And I can only speak for myself on that. You know, as an Anglo-Saxon uh, male, um, you know, my heritage is Southern. Sure. My, my father and a lot of my relatives were from Virginia. And, you know, during the Civil War, there's no doubt about the fact that many of them were Confederates, you know, mm -hmm. and that's something I have to think about if I want to really understand that Christ is in me and Christ is in you. And, you know, I think we really need to own our lens and understand what it is so that, not so we can hang out there, but overcome it. I mean, you know, every so often, I think particularly with Anglo-Saxons, when we're around our own, when we're around people who are like us, that's when you hear the racism come out. That's when the unfortunate things are said, the things that we should you know, never say. And, you know, as a younger person, I didn't realize just how harmful that can be. Sure. Uh, and, and, and I've really um, had to think about that as I've gotten older. And, and also because, you know, I, you know, I have a Korean son. That's right. And um, I have been on mission trips before where uh, my son, you see, wasn't served ice cream at a particular ice cream parlor uh, while we were on a mission trip. And they did that because of his skin hue. And when I think about how angry that made me, that my son was treated that way, then I have to really think about how I treat my neighbors. You know, I have to really try to overcome some things that, you know, are part of, of who I am, but, you know, that we all need to overcome in the church. Anyway, you were getting ready to say. Um, yeah, you know, uh, Pastor Will mentioned that uh, we hang out with who we are comfortable with. And I think that's a very natural occurrence. We right. tend to, we're drawn to certain affinity groups mm -hmm. which draw us comfort. Mm -hmm. uh, my parents, they worship at a Korean church. It's not mm -hmm. because they want to intentionally be racist. Mm -hmm. It's because as they immigrated here, they were uh, searching for others who were like them. Right. Uh, so they can share similar life journey stories together, similar experiences. So that double-edged sword is when you're with your people, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's the same skin color, whether it's a certain social club or network, uh, you, you think like that affinity group. And uh, the double-edged sword is on one side, you, you gain comfort, you're, you're mm -hmm. comfortable around them. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other side, uh, directly or indirectly, you can uh, develop uh, certain patterns of speech that you might not be proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, tend to be a little more racist or openly racist uh, mm -hmm. amongst uh, certain key individuals as long as it doesn't leave this room or, mm -hmm. or we understand each mm -hmm. other in this, this circle. Uh, so it's kind of hard because Slaughter says in his book that we really need to strive to desegregate mm -hmm. uh, our churches, our yeah. people, uh, because if we're really uh, looking for a revolutionary kingdom, mm -hmm. uh, living into that kingdom lens, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not about skin color. Right. It's not about uh, just one gender. It's, it's, it's all about uh, 
uh, all means all and God's kingdom exactly. is for all. Yeah. And I, I think it starts with being a little uh, self-aware about, you know, what, where we're coming from, what our lens is and, and just how we can then um, try to, to find connection with others. I, I said in the intro, you know, I, um, Eric knows it's true. I, uh, one of my fraternity brothers from school is a very, um, he's a direct descendant of a very notable uh, Southern Civil War figure. And he's a great guy, by the way. The thing, the thing that we have to, I think, understand is we have to use our words. We have to speak out, I think, particularly within our own set. Some things that Anglos sometimes I've heard in Virginia say, you hear somebody say, well, wouldn't it be great if the South had won the war? And I always cut that one off and I say, what an mm -hmm. idiotic thing. Mm -hmm. You know, this country went through a horrific bloodbath. Race was a big part of that, a horrific bloodbath. When I was a, a, a scout growing up, um, I put the uh, flags on the graves Memorial mm. Day in the cemetery over there in Winchester, oh, wow. mm -hmm. and uh, 11,000 uh, dead, Civil War. Uh, few, I think it was like 6,000 Union, 5,000 Confederate, something like that. And you know that town only had 4,500 residents at the time. And when you think about the pain that this country has gone through over race, sure. and you know, brought to near destruction over it. Mm -hmm. You know, this is just really important in the church. And so when somebody says something like that, I just have to say that would be the most, that would be horrible sure. if that were to happen, have happened. And, and to start, you know, pushing back a little bit, let's push back a lot, just own that we don't want to be that way. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a start when we're in our own, you know, groups, sure, sure. our own groups. I, I don't know. Um, I don't, I don't know what that looks like for you, mm -hmm. you know? Well, well, the, the hard part about um, life is we all experience it in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up in, in the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, then I, all of a sudden it felt like I was thrown into Farmville, Virginia, Hampton, Sydney, mm -hmm. where my friends in Chicago, when they went to big universities, uh, their Korean student fellowship was a hundred, two hundred people mm -hmm. in Farmville. I was the it's Korean Student yourself, Association. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah. one Korean in, in for miles, right, or, or many miles. Uh, so it was very hard to be the only uh, person of a particular color mm -hmm. in uh, even uh, even my, my friends who uh, the African American friends who who sat down at a certain table in the cafeteria. Uh, I was a different color. Mm -hmm. uh, but I could kind of integrate mm -hmm. uh, with other minorities uh, because we had something in common. Yeah, mm. Mm -hmm. yeah and, and I think that, you know, the church, um, the church has got to do better. And we're, I think we're working hard in some places and sometimes we're not working at all on it. But I think we need to keep that, that focus uh, in front of us that really if we want to be you know, in this kingdom of God, if, we, if this is important to us, um, this has got to be one of the top priorities that we deal with. And we need to, need to be aware that a lot of people who claim the name of Jesus feel like they're mm -hmm. being shut out, not allowed to participate in one way or another. Um, you know, I think we need to think about our leadership, you know, in our churches. We need to think about um, the people who work in our churches. And we need to think about, you know, how is it that we can demonstrate what this kingdom of God is supposed to be about mm -hmm. and, and what it's supposed to, to look like. You know, one, one thing that Slaughter talks about that's kind of an underlying tone that, we've, that you and I have talked about mm -hmm. is 
uh, how he focuses on how we need to be more relational. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you look at me, mm -hmm. I'm not Eric, your Korean friend. No, I'm Eric. Eric, your friend. Right, 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 right. Uh, my wife doesn't know me as Eric, my Korean husband. Is the the man that I love and choose to partner with for the the rest of my life. Uh, so as we develop relationships and we're more transparent about mm -hmm. it, it's not about uh, who's. Uh, white to not white to uh, whatever color it might be. It's about treating each other as an individual mm -hmm. first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, a hard part in, um, in this country that there's such a racial divide that sometimes people are apologizing just for uh, being white. Mm -hmm. uh, the terms like white privilege or other kinds of things that are thrown around so casually mm. Um, it's not a, a white issue. It's not a white black issue. It's not a, an immigrant issue. It's, it's a human issue. Mm. And we all need to, uh, to treat each other uh, as God's creation. If, we, mm -hmm. if you are made in God's image, right. if I am made in God's image, we treat each other yeah. that we corporately are made in God's image. And right. we, uh, we start with a relationship. Yeah, it's, it's back to that relationship. If Christ is in us, sure. then we are doubly, uh, you know, charged to, to do this. Sure. And then, you know, and then how we treat others in the rest of the world, that says a lot about this Christ that's in us. Mm -hmm. and just the extent to which Jesus is in us. Sure. And um, I think this is one of the things that has, um, it's just one of the things that uh, continues, I think, to sadden a lot of people about the truth. And, and thinking about how younger people perceive mm -hmm. the church. Sure. sure. Um, I know that that's, these things aren't lost on younger people. Um, and mm -hmm. they see the church as being segregated in some ways. And um, they are concerned, I think. I think they, I think younger generations are a little bit, um, yeah. Would you say they're a little head on some of these issues? Yeah, well, Sl Slaughter touches a point, and he says there, there are three reasons that younger people are staying away from the church. Yeah. One is the church is irrelevant. Two, the church is full of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. And three, uh, bad leadership. Mm -hmm. So uh, Pender has great leadership, <laughs> and, we <strive laughs> to not Thanks, be, and we strive not to be hypocrites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we deal with uh, how is a church relevant mm -hmm. in a time that feels so irrelevant. Uh, so if we focus on what Slaughter is saying in his book, uh, two of the things, you know, we try to practice good theology and mm -hmm. good leadership. Mm -hmm. We try to, to practice what we preach and live out our faith. Mm -hmm. But how can we be relevant, especially towards a, a racial issue in a country that is so uh, filled with that racial divide? Mm -hmm. How do we remain relevant? And I think one of the ways is uh, we talk about it like we're doing so today. Mm -hmm. We talk about it and we do something. We don't hide mm -hmm. uh, from it. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to brag about Pastor Will for just a moment. When uh, the Atlanta shooting happened uh, with uh, Asian Americans, uh, Will and I had a phone call, and he asked how I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I shared uh, my reflection of, of racism that I've encountered in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is how we stay relevant. Mm -hmm. We invest in each other's lives. Mm -hmm. We talk about it. We go out to lunch. Right. We catch up, and we, we nurture each other mutually right. in that relationship. Go down the H Mart, one of the greatest places That's to right. eat That's <laughs> right. here in Northern Virginia. Uh -huh. So... You know, but I do think that's it. I think important, um, and our, you know, our African American brothers and sisters. You know, we need to, you know, ha invite them sure, to the absolutely. table. Uh, we need to make sure that we have, um, you know, the people that are around us that are in our community uh, involved in that's the right. things that we do mm -hmm. as Christians. And I think in our personal life that you know this is not a, this is not, you know, just church business. This is like a total remake of who we are. Mm -hmm. And um, so this is important. This is something that uh, the church has struggled with, continues to struggle with. And, um, you know, to try to get in touch, in touch with uh, what people are struggling with who are in our midst. Sure. You know, um, I think we want to talk to the people 
around us who are coming from different places and kind of find out what their struggle is. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a beginning point, but we've really got a long way, a long way to go on this one, I think. A long way to go. Uh, but there are signs of hope here and there. Yeah, There are yeah, signs absolutely. of hope. You know, you talked about our African-American brothers and sisters. We also recognize uh, many great Latinas and Latinos in our yeah. community. A lot of um, uh, friends from the local mosque uh, who are um, are just discriminated by the color of their skin, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the uh, um, anniversary of 9-11 not too far from us. Our church visited a, a local mosque on Shirley Gate, mm -hmm. and uh, we were uh, talking about uh, what it was like for them to live uh, through 9-11. Um, and um, although they were instantly discriminated against um, once things hit the news, uh, the day after 9-11 is when people came together. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't about a, the color of your skin. It wasn't about what kind of accent or, or what you looked like, but everyone was coming together to help each other mm -hmm. in a time of crisis and a time of need. Yeah, I think that's that is that that does show that um, that God is is in each one of us, that Christ is in each one of us. Um, so I think you know um, it is important to understand how we're interacting with different people. You mentioned the Latino community and so forth, and uh, you, you know I think we've got to be careful that we're a big problem. We're, we can be so two faced about stuff. Um, this is my second time to live in South Riding, and the first time I was there, uh, we were installing fiber optic cables mm. uh, so we could have, you know, high speed internet, you know, and so forth. And, you know, when there's roofs that are going on in the neighborhood, um, it's going to be, it's Latino people who are often doing that. And, and yet, it's just amazing to me that we don't. <laughs> For some reason, we're not showing value to these people who are really making our community stronger. Things that, things that we're not able to, that wouldn't be happening. That's right. Wouldn't be happening. And, you know, how dare we just ignore uh, a, a total population like that? Well, I think this is some compelling stuff mm. to think about what it means to say that Christ is in each one of us and um, I think we should also think about women and and their interaction with the church too I know that you know I, I don't know about you but in this church if it weren't for women I really wouldn't get much done um, around, around at Pender and we do have women in leadership and they are very strong leaders and that's another aspect to this understanding of Christ in us yeah, and I think from a, a biblical interpretation, oftentimes we get stuck on a, one letter to Timothy mm -hmm. about certain women in the church. Oh, yeah. But yeah. then we uh, quickly forget about the other women uh, yeah. who were so powerful in the church. Yeah. Uh, the Lydia's in the church, the Mary's in the Joanna, church. Joanna. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The Ruth's. powerhouses. Uh, so, so many powerhouses. Uh, so I, I think an important lesson is not to be fo fixated on just one piece of scripture, but take it as a whole and, and remember yeah. those uh, uh, four mothers uh, that really led the way. Yeah. Well, this is something that we need to, uh, to think about together. And, uh, you know, uh, my hope and my prayer is that we do pull down these walls sure. of division that we've talked about and that the church itself more resemble the kingdom that uh, we're called to represent, Absolutely. the kingdom of God. Absolutely. Well, I'm really thankful you've been with us here for two weeks now, you, Eric, and uh, really looking forward to seeing what God's going to do in and through mm. you. And uh, let's uh, pray together. Yes, please. God, we thank you for uh, this kingdom of which we're a part and help all of us to really come to grips with and understand what it means to see Christ in each other. And guide us as we do that and correct us when we're wrong and lead us forward faithfully into the future. 
In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, bye for now, and we hope to see you again uh, very soon. We're going to have a uh, series that's coming up. We're going to be talking about relationships uh, here on our Pender podcast. And so I'm very uh, hopeful that you'll come back next time, and we'll begin to talk about relationships from a Christian perspective. Thanks for coming, and may God bless you richly.